the real danger there is often we believe the stories that we tell ourselves. And I think I just, I said, I'd like to really add some value for your listeners. What I would say is whenever you're suffering, whenever you feel, you know, you're, you're switched on, there's a nervousness, there's a shift physiologically, Hmm. you know, it might be, it might be hands around the throat, hopefully not your partners. (laughs) You know, there's, there's that tightness, there's a nervousness, it's in the chest, it's in the stomach, it's the sweaty hands, it's the pulse that's picked up. There's a, ask yourself a question, where is it? Hmm. Because if it isn't in the room now with you, it's in your head. And because the brain treats everything as real, remembered and imagined as a safety reaction to keep a uh, survival, to keep you safe. That's its job. And this, this is why horror movies terrify people. If you think about it, you know, you've got people, people grab the cushion and they're like, Oh, you know, don't go in the basement. What? And they run out of the room and they get, and think about it. Yeah, I totally agree. It's, it's photons on a screen and they're actors and actresses with a whole team of people. And you even know it's not real. And yet you still, this is the power of what is actually being processed in the mind. So if we can react that powerfully to what we know is actually not real, Hmm. what do you think then happens to what we react to from our own black box, that stored knowledge of, all past and all possible futures because i can tell you from from raw experience and all the people i've worked with we Mm. are hardly ever mentally present you crash the car you're in the moment Mm. you break your leg you're in the moment yeah nowhere else to go you drop the tea on the floor you're in all senses focused immediately on exactly what's happening now Totally agree. Because you have to do something immediately. How often are we in those situations? Very rare. But when you're in unconscious habit, the mind realizes that the body is in a safe place. I mean, I call this the luxury of suffering, as strange as that may sound. I'm not talking physical suffering because you've got an injury. And that's very real and you've got to do stuff. I'm talking the luxury of mental suffering because I think this is, this is a big realization moment for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. You can only ever truly suffer mentally mm-hmm. when you're physically in a very safe place because you don't have to focus on the immediacy of an urgent event and do something about it. Now, you could be making tea in the kitchen and you're angry at an ex-relationship and the physiology yeah. and the emotions and the chemicals are kicking and they're not here. Totally agree with that. Totally. Can you see how easy it is to suffer? And what I say to people is, where is your pain? Because if it isn't here, it's here. And then you realize that you're responding to an illusion and you can bring yourself back to this moment. And I think the way that people step into that over time, and it was Blaise Pascal that quoted this, most of our problems would resolve themselves if we were able to sit alone in a room for 10 minutes as the observer to that which arises because the language of the body feeling an emotion the language of the head faults and when i'm no longer chasing these things that a are good or bad that i shouldn't have that i'm concerned about that i don't like that i've judged when i'm no longer chasing these things that i need to fix and i can observe them as clouds passing I'm no longer at war with the parts of myself that I feel I need to fix to fit in. I accept the totality, the yin-yang, the light-dark, the good-bad. 